Hey guys, it's Lana from RH. You probably hear my wife yelling at the dogs in the background. That's a, kind of a typical typical background music for my, my videos, I've noticed. <laughs> Anyways, I'm doing this video for Emma. She's one of our project coordinators. And um, I thought I had done a video showing her how to set up a Fiestimate spreadsheet, but apparently I have not. She informed me that I had not done that. So, I'm going to take care of that tonight. Alright, so... Uh, it's uh, when when we, we open a proposal, um, we will typically create a fee estimate. Um, so if you're in our network server here, network folder RH, uh, you're gonna go to templates, RH uh, proposals, and you're gonna grab this fee estimate here, version three. Um, and every company is gonna have their own fee estimate spreadsheet. Um, this is the one we use. I've uh, been at several companies. Every fee estimate spreadsheet was a little bit different in each company. Um, so I'm going to show you how ours works. Um, but uh, there are lots of different ways to set your fee spreadsheet up. None of them are wrong. Uh, there's just there's just different ways to do it. And uh, I've tried to, to pick a couple of the best things from some places I've worked at. <clears throat> okay, so even if this isn't your fee estimate spreadsheet, um, it'll teach you a little bit about how fee estimate spreadsheet works. Okay, so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to copy this, um, and then we're going to go to the actual proposal. Uh, so for us, that's under business development proposals. Um, we have that sorted by year. And uh, I'm going to uh, just make a new... Um, you know what, let's go ahead. Let's do this one in Jamestown. Okay, so it's going to go under proposal docs for client. So we're going to paste it in here. Okay, and you can just leave this name the same because as a general rule, well, we do not ship the actual fee estimate to the client. So they get the fee, uh, but this is an internal document. We don't, we don't typically give them the full breakdown uh, it, and not in this format. We, we do occasionally do that, but it, that will get cleaned up and formatted. So this is just for us to properly estimate the cost of the job for the proposal. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up so you guys can take a look at it. Okay, so uh, here's the spreadsheet. So uh, let me just explain a little bit about how this works. Then I'll show you how we set it up for the proposal and then we'll just plug some numbers in so you can kind of see how the math, how the math goes. So um, across the top here, we have the, the principal, I'm sorry, not the principal, the, uh, the team member, the type of team member. Okay, so principal surveyor, project manager, manager, senior land surveyor, assistant land surveyor. So this matches our rate schedule. Okay, then we have these, these are kind of special columns here. In fact, we can italicize them. So these are, are not uh, hourly labor, it's reimbursables, travel, equipment rental, sub subcontractors or subconsultants. Um, so these are what we call direct costs. Okay, these are the hourly rates. They come out of our hourly rate schedule. Uh, they are occasionally different. Um, we do have a, we don't have very many, but we've got maybe one or two clients that have a negotiated rate schedule. And so these, these rare, on rare occasions, these will change. But as a general rule, they're set, and uh, we make small adjustments to our rates, you know, every two or three years, maybe. Okay, so <clears throat> this stuff in orange, uh, these are the tasks that, um, as a general rule, we want to have a one-to-one -one correspondence with the scope of services. Now, we always leave this one in. So this is a proposal and project setup. Um, and we just, we leave this in here because uh, it's a real cost that we have, although we often don't, um, we don't always get to include it in the fee estimate. Um, we do occasionally include it, um, but we have it here because it's a cost. We need to see whether we, uh, you know, it costs me, you know, for for a relatively inexpensive proposal. It's it's twelve hundred bucks to get set up, and that's probably low. It's probably closer to two thousand. Yeah, because it's probably it's probably more like something like that. Okay, so this stays the same. We don't we don't mess with this usually. Uh, this will stay the same, you know, depending on the level of effort in the proposal, you could adjust these numbers, but we want to be able to see, hey, this is a real cost. This is why we don't hand out proposals to whoever, to whoever asks for one. 
Okay, but down here, this is where we start plugging in. Uh, whoop, we start. We want to start plugging in our actual tasks here. Okay. Um, and this actually should have a. This should have a bold row above it. Okay. So each task um, is in orange text, and it gets a. Uh, it's separated from the other tasks by just some thin borders. Okay. And then each task has its own total. So these are kind of subtasks. Now the client doesn't usually see this. Okay, they just see this in our proposal. Okay, but we have kind of what you could call the subtasks here, and then this gets it gets rolled up at the bottom for a total by task. Okay. So the the uh, the hours get totaled in two ways. They get totaled across the columns by staff type. So I can see down here this proposal has 68 hours of principal surveyor. But uh, it also gets totaled across the row and multiplied by the hourly rates. That's what that long formula is to give you the actual cost of that subtask. Okay. So in this example here under proposal and project setup, I've got $1,800 for eight hours of principal time. And I got $230 for two hours of project coordinator time. And you can see that math works. If you take two times 115, you get 230. That's what we're doing there. And then here, we just sum. We're just sum adding those up. That's how we get that number. Okay. And then down at the bottom, we do the same math here, kind of in a cross check. These two numbers should match. They usually don't, but that's why we have them. There's two numbers there. That's a check. If those numbers aren't the same, something's broken in your spreadsheet. Okay, so um, how do you set this up if you have a scope? Okay, or if, if you have a if Emma if she has a proposal request, how do you set that up? Okay, so in this case we uh, we have uh, let's see I'd like to do this with the proposal request, but I don't know if it's in here. It is. Okay, so here's our proposal request that we use at RH. Super simple, and you can see in the proposal request here uh, this has three tasks. Okay, and that's exactly how we want to set up our fee estimate spreadsheet. Okay, so our first task in the proposal request is uh, boundary survey. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna just change this. We're gonna say task one is a boundary survey. Okay, now if this is Emma doing this, she isn't gonna know what the subtasks are. Okay, so she can just delete those, leave them blank, right? And then we wanna zero these out. Okay, zero the hours out because we'll add the hours that the project surveyor will add the hours. Okay, so the second task on this particular proposal is land description packages. Okay, and again, we're going to just delete these because if we were Emma, we wouldn't know what the subtasks are yet. She'll learn, but not yet. Okay, and then the last task is a monument placement and record survey map. Now you notice I have that already down here, right? Um, so we can cheat, and uh, we're going to just delete these rows because okay, the subtasks are actually going to be the same. And I can just make that task three. Now you notice when I do that, I break my formulas. That's one disadvantage of this particular type of fee estimate spreadsheet. So that's okay. You just come in here and fix that, take out that missing reference and copy across. And then these all uh, will be fixed. Okay, and you can see, oh, one more to fix. Um, as a gut check, we want to make sure that these two numbers match. Oh, nope, this one, this number down here. So we got to take it out of there too. So there is a little bit of cleanup to do. Okay, the two numbers match, so that's good. Okay. <clears throat> All right, sorry, we want to zero this out. So let's do that. Okay, so when Emma does, uh, uh, sets up a fee estimate spreadsheet, it's gonna look something like this. These will probably be blank, okay. So she's just gonna have these blank and have them zeroed out. All we need is the task names, and then the, the project surveyor can go in and actually fill these numbers out and come up with the fee estimate, okay? Now, here's what we don't have that I would like to get. At some point, I would like to get uh, 
a template uh, so that Emma can just uh, paste in the tasks, right? So here, here's what it might look like. And we don't have this yet. I gotta work on this, but so let's just take this one here. Okay, so would it be nice? We're gonna get this set up. We're gonna make a new tab. Let's just move or copy. So we haven't done this yet, but we will. We'll make a new tab and we're gonna call it template tasks. Okay, and then in that spreadsheet, get rid of that formatting real quick. In that, uh, in this worksheet, we will uh, have a set of templates for our most common task. Uh, that Emma can then just uh, copy over. Uh, so if she knows the task, we'll, we'll have a template set up with the subtasks, right? So that'll be super handy. We're not there yet. Okay, now one other very important thing that I did not tell you guys is um, we have two fee estimate sheets like this. One is for prevailing wage and one is for non-prevailing wage. So in California on certain jobs, the government makes us pay union wages that's a pretty big difference. So you wanna make sure, Emma, when you set up the sheet that you know, is it P-dub or non P-dub, so we get the right sheet. Okay, and then we'll work on getting these template tasks set up for Emma as well. Okay, so uh, we, can, uh, we can do the same thing here. So really the way we should have this set up, when Emma, when Emma opens it, it should just look like this. Okay, it should just be blank. And all she has to do is plug in the task names, okay, and we will do the rest. Okay, so it should look something like that. Okay, now one thing uh, I didn't show you guys is what happens if you get, um, so we've got, uh, we've got three tasks or four tasks in the template. What happens if you have a scope with five tasks? Sometimes we might. We might have one with five tasks or seven tasks, or depending on what we're doing. We don't usually get more than 10, but. Um, so what do you do in that situation? Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to, um, how to go ahead and add a task. And let me just clean these numbers up. So when, when Emma first opens it, this is what it should look like. It should just be blank, and she can just go plug in the task numbers. Okay, but let's say there's five tasks. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some blank rows down here. Okay, and then you can just copy this down. Okay, now you do have to make some adjustments to the formulas when you do that, right? Because now our, our formulas aren't picking up the, uh, you gotta come in here and add this new total, subtotal here and then copy that across, okay? Um, otherwise your numbers aren't gonna match up. Um, but I don't want Emma to worry about that. Uh, the project surveyor can fix that because he's gonna be the one plugging the numbers in. Uh, all we want her to do is the project coordinators to come in here and get the, get the fee estimate spread, spread speed, spreadsheet set up. So she's just gonna come in here and add the task names, and then eventually, if we have a template, she'll be able, you know, it'll it'll say task X, or task zero, whatever. She'll be able to just copy this over and paste it into the slot. Okay, so uh, anyways, that's how we set up a fee estimate spreadsheet, right? So we're just trying to get this set up so the tasks correspond to the scope, right? The tasks and the proposal request, these, these come, these, Come over in the proposal request, but they go in the scope of services, and, and we want the fee estimate to match the scope of services, basically. By the way, these are also the tasks that go in Paycom, our time tracking software. So these tasks kind of run through multiple parts of our job management system here at RH. All right, Emma will probably have a bunch of questions for me. It's okay, but at least this will get her started. And uh, and I might do uh, I might do some more some more videos on uh, on how to work with this fee estimate spreadsheet.